But remastering video games has become quite popular over the years. And what it is, is taking old video games and improving it in areas such as graphics and audio to meet modern standards. And so I tried doing this in stable diffusion over the past couple of days. So I took some old video game cutscenes and improved them. And here are some of the results I got. And while I think they look okay, they don't look exactly the best. But one thing I learned whilst doing this challenge is that there are so many different parameters and options to pick from that if you really wanted to and spent all the time learning them, you could achieve really high quality cutscenes if you wanted. And so in this video, I'll show you the basic workflow I used. So to begin, you're going to need five things. You're going to need FFmpeg, EB Synth, Temporal Kit, Control Net, and the Control Net models. As always, all the links for today will be in the description below. So for FFmpeg, you'd want to go to its website, download Windows, Windows Build, and then download the Essential 7 zip folder or zip folder. Once that's done, you'll want to extract the FFmpeg folder, go to bin, and then add all three of these files to path. Now, if you don't understand what I did there or I'm going too fast for you, I'll link a really good video on how to install FFmpeg. The next thing you want to get is ebsynth. So if you go to the actual website and just download, and once you've unzipped that, you'll have an ebsynth.exe file. And if you click on that, it'll start the actual program. The next thing you'll need is Temporal Kit. So if you go to the actual GitHub page for Temporal Kit, click on code, copy the link, go back to your stable diffusion, paste it in here, install, and then once that's installed, apply and restart UI. And once you've done that, you should see the Temporal Kit menu option. We'll also be using Control Net. So if you go to the Control Net GitHub page, go to code, copy the link, go back to Stable Diffusion, and now this time paste in the Control Net link install and apply and restart UI. So since we're downloading control net, we'll actually need to download the model files. So go on to the control net hugging face page and download the canny path file and the open post path file. Once you've downloaded that, you'll want to go to your actual stable diffusion folder, go to models, control net, and then paste in the two models that you've just downloaded. Once you've done that, you'll want to go to settings, control net, and then where it says multi-control net, you'll want to set that slider to two, apply the settings, and then give your stable diffusion another restart. So now that everything is set up, we can now actually start on making the video. So before we get started, I'll explain the basic workflow. So using temporal kit pre-processing, we take the actual video and from it extract keyframes from within the actual video. So not all frames. So with our default setting, we're extracting a keyframe every five frames. And with those keyframes, what we do is go to image to image and stylize them, make them look much better. From there, we go back to temporal kit. We go to ebsynth process and prepare all the necessary files before we actually pass it into ebsynth. Then we drag the files into ebsynth. And now what ebsynth is, is sort of a fill in the blank software. And so what it does, it takes those keyframes that we stylized and improved. And by analyzing them, it learns the style of the actual improved keyframes and applies it to the actual original input video. From there, we go back to the ebsynth process tab and then we click on recombine ebsynth and the final video will be generated. And so to begin, you'll actually want to grab a video game cutscene that you want to remaster. So you can do that from someplace like YouTube. And for today, this is the cutscene that I'll be using. Come on, get out. We can't stay here forever. So once you've got your actual video file, we'll begin pre-processing the actual video. So to do this, go to Temporal Kit, pre-processing, and drag your video into the input video section. Set the sides to one. And because I know it's a 720p resolution video, I'm going to go to height resolution and set the actual value to 720. I'm going to select EB synth mode. And now what you'll want to do is paste the target folder for where you want all your folders to be kept. So I'm just going to go paste in the following directory. For batch settings, you'll want batch run. And then going to EB synth settings, you'll want split video. And then you'll want to press the run button. So once that's done, you should be able to see the following files and folders in the actual directory. 
Now, depending on the actual length of your video, you may have more folders than I do. And the reason for this is that with the default settings, we're only able to process three seconds at a time. And because my video is roughly six seconds long, it's generated two folders, zero and one. So zero would be the first three seconds of my video. And one would be the next three seconds of my video to give me a total of six seconds. So if you had like nine or 12 seconds, you'd have three or four folders. Now, once we've got all the files and folders set up, you want to go to your image to image tab. And now go into the input folder and paste a random image into the actual image to image tab. And the goal here, what we're trying to do is actually make the image look better. So I'm going to be using the rev animated model. You don't have to use this specific model. I just prefer this model and I'm going to paste in the following prompts. Once again, you don't actually need to use a specific prompt. It's whatever one you prefer. And just a quick tip. If the video you're using contains a famous video game character, most of the time you can actually use the actual video game character's name and be able to get consistent faces. And the reason this works is the same reason why using celebrities in your prompts work. It's just that there's so many images of them online that Stable Diffusion has figured out what they roughly look like. Now moving down, you'll want to scroll down and for the seed value, you'll want to put in a number that you remember. And the logic behind this is that for all your input images, you'll want to have them to use the same seed. And the reason for this is that it'll help keep consistency within your actual video. Next, you'll want to decrease the denoising strength to around about something like 0 0.3. And now you'll want to click on the control net tab. For control net unit zero, we'll be going single image. Preprocessor will be open pose. And for the model, you'll want open pose two. Click enable and pixel perfect. Now click on the control net unit one tab, click preprocessor. Now this time we're going to click canny. The model as well will also be canny. And then you'll also want to click enable and pixel perfect. And once you've done all of that, you want to go and click generate. Now for some, this is probably your first time using control net. So we downloaded two models, open pose and canny. What the open pose did is basically analyze the, our input image and find out what posture the person was in. And using that, it uses that as a reference to generate the actual output image. And by doing this, we're able to keep the posture consistent between our input and output image. And with Kanye, what happens is that lines are drawn across the actual input image. And by doing this, Stable Diffusion uses this as a reference to actually generate its actual output image. And these two settings, Kanye and Open Pose, just help keep our image consistent between the input and output image. So this was the image I was able to generate. And uh, straight away, I could see I made an error. I've actually put in the wrong resolution. So to change this, I can actually go and manually input the resolution of the actual image. But instead, a more simple way to do it is actually just go to PNG info, drag the actual image, and now click send image to image. And what that does, it will automatically set the resolution to the right width and height. So now I can go and click generate again. So now this was the image I was able to get now that we have the right resolution. So now comparing the two images, you can see that image to image was able to make the face much more defined. So from not having much face detail to having a relative amount of face detail. And if I wanted even more detailed or even more dramatic changes, I could just go back to stable diffusion and increase the denoising strength. So now we've got an image we're happy with. What you want to do is keep this image open up in another tab, go back to stable diffusion, delete the actual image to image, open up your input folder again, and now this time paste in a different image. Now keeping all the settings the same, click generate again. Now we've actually got the second image. What you want to do is open up this image and also open up the first image that we generated. And what we're looking for here is consistency between the two. Now, what I mean by this is if the images sort of roughly look similar to each other, so the face doesn't look too dramatically different, that's a good thing because the aim of the game here is consistency. If you don't have consistency between the actual two pictures, so if the face in the first image looks completely different to the actual face in the second image, what will happen is in the actual final video, you'll actually be able to see the face changing in structure and shape as it's play. And so this effect is really undesirable and we try to do our best to avoid it. 
And if you are facing this issue, a quick way to fix this is go back to stable diffusion and actually lower your denoising strength till the actual faces start to become much more consistent. And now that we've gotten two good test images and we like the consistency between both of them, you'll want to go into the batch tab of your image to image. And once you've done that, you'll want to go into the actual folder you're working in, go on the zero folder, click on input, and now paste this link into the input directory. And for output directory, you'll want to go back into the zero folder, click on output, and now paste that link into the output directory. You'll want to scroll down and then for control net unit zero, you'll want to select batch. And also for control net unit one, you'll also want to select batch and then scroll up again and then click generate. Once that's done, you should be able to go back into your zero folder, go into output, and now you should see all the output images that it was able to generate. So now if I open up one of the images and start scrolling through them, I can get a rough idea of how the final video will look. And while it doesn't look as detailed as I hoped, it's fairly consistent across the images. So that's a good sign. Now the next step is to go back into Temporal Kit, click on the EB Synth Process tab, and this time go into your actual folder again, click on zero because that's the folder we're working in. Copy the link and paste it into the input folder. Click read that settings. And now all the settings have been done for you. You just have to change the actual resolution to the resolution your original video was. Now click prepare eBSynth. Once you've done that, you should be able to see it's generated a few new folders. The main ones are frames and keys. Now that we've got everything pre-processed, you'll want to open up eBSynth and take the actual keys folder and drag it into eBSynth in the keys frame section. And straight away, you should see it should start populating the actual table. And then you'll also want to take the frames folder and drag that into the video section. Once you've done that, you can now click run all and it'll start processing. Once that's done, you'll want to go back into your stable diffusion and now click recombine EB synth. And what they'll do is take all the frames that EB synth has generated and put them all into one video. Once the video has been generated, I'm going to click download, open up the video and see the final result. Now comparing the two videos, we were able to see, we were able to get more detail in the actual new video than in the original. And if I wanted even more detail, I could just raise the denoising strength. The only problem is the more I do that, the higher chance the actual video itself will not look as stable. So there'll be a lot of shifting and changing within the actual video. So the other thing you may have noticed is that I was only able to generate the first three seconds of the video and I'm still missing the other last three seconds of the video. And that's because I've only generated the video in the actual zero folder. So the zero folder only contained the first three seconds to generate the other portion of the video, I'd have to go back to image to image, go to batch. And now because I have another one folder, I'd have to change the input folder to one, the output folder to one, and all the following steps where you see me using the zero folder, I'd have to change that to one. And once you've done that, you should get a separate folder within your actual one folder. So just like how we got it in the zero folder. So crossfade is the output video you'd have one in your one folder. And then what you'd want to do from there is just open up your favorite video editing software and just recombine the videos together. So it can become quite tedious if you do have a very long video as you can only process three seconds of video at a time. But that's just a limitation that we have when using this workflow. Now that the video has been generated, there are many ways that you can actually improve it. So to begin to make your input video look much better, consider the actual input video you're using. So if it has really complex movements within the video, it won't look as good. It'd be much harder to remain consistent. Whereas if the character is standing still, it'd be much more easier to generate much better quality videos. And the second tip is to use lower files of celebrities or video game characters within the actual image to image tab of your stable diffusion. And by doing this, the face within your video will actually be much more higher quality and much more consistent. And so the actual output quality will look a lot more better. The third tip is more about messing around with the actual parameters. So for EB synth, if you click on the advanced tab, you'll have stuff like mapping, deflicker, diversity, 
and by modifying these parameters, you'll be able to get a higher quality video. This also applies to the control nets that we used. So you could try modifying these parameters and see what the changes that happens. So that was my basic workflow. As there's so many parameters to tweak, you can tell there's a lot of room for improvement. So try it out and let me know if you have any more tips and I shall see you in the next video.